Hello and welcome to my first video on my channel. This is Zach, aka the Professional Nerd, and today I am going to review the Folger Tech 2020 Prusa i3 3D printer. Here is a slight overview of the printer. This is the GE Tech. Uh, full graphic LCD screen with SD card um, there will be a future review on that so let's get into the main parts of the printer so here are some prints I've done here is the NASA wrench. It does not turn. It seems to have fused together, but I will try reprinting that. A puzzle. And here is the 3D Benchy. This is my first 3D printer, and it seems to have very great quality, and I like the easiness of it of the printer. It does not do overhangs too well, but I'm hoping I'm going to reprint this and this should, I hope, help with the 3D prints. This is a, this printer is a do-it-yourself kit. It took me roughly 14 hours to build. 12, eh, yeah, about 14. Um, but to fully calibrate it and get the prints like this, it took me about a week. But that was off and on, a couple hours a day, you know, getting it do this. Um, they were, at first, they have very good quality. I really like the customer service because this rod, when I first got it, the grooves were bent and it would not allow the nut to pass through. And, yeah. They're, they ship with the kit, uh, four of these end stops. I have an extra one, you know, if one breaks. And on the ramps controller, which I did have to buy, purchase a new one, the ramps was of terrible Chinese quality. I did, they do send an extra driver board. Here is the old ramps, 1.4 board, and it fried on me one day, so I had to go buy one at Micro Center. But this board just stopped working, and then the Arduino Mega that they send you is their own Folger Type one, but that also will not work. So I'm gonna probably go look into deeper, figure out what went wrong, and try fixing so I have an extra one on hand. Um, cable management is a mess. I hate keeping managing, but I plan on using some of these zip ties and 3D printing parts to, you know, fix the cable set so it's not a mess back here. The one downside to this was it does not come with, it has a heated bed, but it does not come with the glass. So I had to go and I took a picture frame and bought a glass cutter and just cut it, you know, to s I used the glass cutter and, you know, scored it, broke it, and had that. One thing I wish this printer came with would be the LCD screen, which I purchased separately for $20 on Amazon. I will link that down below. And I wish it came with the glass which I just use the picture frame like I said 
and I wish this was a dual extruder instead of the single extruder. Um, all the, overall, this is very sturdy. It's a very nice printer. This, I, the quality is just pretty good for, you know, there is some stringing that I've, and I, you know, I fixed. I'm trying to fix. But, you know, over time, this should be a, this should surpass, like, the Ultimaker or other printer. Currently, I am using the Gizmodorks PLA, as you can see by right here, silver. I have a roll of IC3D black PLA and a roll of P or ABS get from Gizmodorks and IC3D. I will be posting individual review videos for each of those once I use them for a week. I've been using this since I got it and I've been getting these great prints. But I would rate this printer at a 7 out of 10. I gave it a 7 because, you know, there was, you know, a problem with the rod, but I understand. But, and, but overall, it was a pretty nice build. Also, if you do build this and buy this printer, it is $300 US dollars. And when you get to this part for this, and the, these, the washer is very, is just barely bigger than that hole. So it was hard to get this entire assembly to stay. But yep, I will, I would rate this printer 7 out of 10 stars. Uh, all the links will be down below in the video description. Like the video, subscribe, and thanks for watching.